that'll do. During this tutorial, I promise I will not say go ahead at the start of every sentence. So with that out of the way, let's go ahead and do this video. Oh, Right, to start with, yeah, you'll need software and hardware. Uh, we'll start with the hardware things you need first. And the first thing is obviously going to be an EEPROM, uh, a writable EEPROM, obviously. Uh, that's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is an EEPROM writer. Uh, this is the TL8662 Plus, a very good little piece of kit. And um, you'll also need the TL866 adapter. Uh, essential for doing these uh, ROMs um, because they've got 42 pins on them uh, and they won't fit into the standard uh, device. Uh, you'll also need PCBs to put your EEPROMs into and I highly recommend uh, this uh, homebrew player which rather than like here I've soldered into the PCB already rather than soldering all the pins in put it into the Mega Drive, finding that it doesn't work. You can just pop it into here and choose which EEPROM you're using and fire it up on your Mega Drive, simple as that. Saves you a lot of hassle. Uh, also, cartridges. Uh, I bought these off AliExpress. These are pretty much identical to an original cart, apart from it doesn't have Sega on the back. Uh, a lot of them you'll find just at the bottom here is very thin where the label meets the bottom is very thin and uh, it just doesn't look like the originals but these are identical um, I'll try and put a link in to Aliexpress so you can get them from there and lastly is a case uh, these are on eBay they are they look like VHS cases I suppose they are clear and they fit multiple carts in N64 SNES and Mega Drive, might be a few others as well. Um, they don't clip in, but they do the job, they look great. So, let's go to the computer and see how this is done. Right, so the first thing we need to do is to find which ROM you want to use. So, uh, I've got Streets of Rage 3 here, which is quite a large file, uh, three megabytes. Um, I highly recommend that you create your own folder. I've put new ROM here. Um, and I'm going to use that to dump everything into because if you use something like your documents or whatever um, it can get lost in all sorts so let's have a look at the the ROM sizes to begin with uh, these are your, your main four your 27C400 which is the smallest one which is for the likes of Altered Beast and Space Harrier and all those ones and then they get larger up to the 4 meg which is what we'll be using for Streets of Rage 3. So we want to start with the USB programmer. So if you go on to that and you'll be presented with this screen. Now ignore everything on this, all you need to look at is buffer here and this AB switch here. So what I want to do is open the ROM. So I need to go back because I put it already made the first mistake there. Put it in desktop. So Streets Rage Three. Uh, leave them as they are. Press OK. Device has not been selected. That's fine. Don't worry about that. And it'll bring it up here. And that'll be the right way around. Streets of Rage Three. Uh, bare knuckle three. And all we need to do then is go up to the top here and press that byte swap button, the A B button. And what that'll do is it'll jumble it all up so we know that's successful then what we want to do is we want to save and this is where you want to find your folder that you've made so there's my new ROM folder open it in there and I'm going to label that uh, SOR3 save and that is that bit done we don't need this any longer so we'll shut that down your next step is HXD now this is a hex editor and now for all these large games uh, you need to open up your Streets of Rage 3 folder which is there, so that's still mixed up 
and then we navigate to tools file tools and split so we press that so that's uh, where it's going to be taken from and now you need to put it into a folder so I'm going to put that into the same folder but now you need to rename this different than what you named your ROM a second ago so I label it Streets of Race 3 as you can see just there uh, that was the byte swap version now I'm going to put Streets of Rage 3 swapped and this means you, you know that this is what you're going to be using save that uh, leave this on custom change that one to bytes and type in 524288 and press OK on that so that what that would have done now is um, separated that ROM into sections so we can now close that go into the new ROM folder just to make sure it's done and there you go you see you got Streets of Rage 3 swapped one down to six so it's split it into six sections so we can close that and now we need to uh, open up our XG Pro the TL866 programmer uh, it looks very complicated but um, I promise you it's straightforward enough uh, to start with select IC here we want to search for the AM27C4096 just by clicking uh, this box here and you can type AMD in and there you'll go onto that one select that so that's fine and you can see the number of uh, I typed in just a second ago is there 524288 bytes so if ever you forget what it is you can always go onto the programmer and it will tell you there what you need to type in I always forget so I always come back onto this and there it is um, go down to the bottom corner, uncheck check ID, uncheck the pin detect, and then we want all these three boxes down the bottom left checked. Uh, people say advise to do the, the voltage at 2.5, so we'll do that. And that's that done. That will have to be changed every time. So will these. Um, this normally stays as it is in this corner here so that's fine okay so when you're ready to write this um, we click on this one in the corner the open and you'll see that you swapped six swapped um, sections so you want to double click on that one that's all fine so just press OK and then we we'll go to program but first we need to make sure that you've got the right uh, switch so as you can see on this here there's a, a notch going down and that's pointing to zero there is a little dot on the top and a lot of people confuse that for the uh, the pointer and it isn't it's the the slot so when you've uh, selected your swapped one you make sure it's on zero and then you press program and that will go through a process of checking that it's okay that the EEPROM's okay and then it'll write uh, once that's done you then open up again select your second swapped part and before you program you need to switch this to one and then you can press write again and so on throughout open up again select your third one and then move it along to the next number until you've finished every segment. It's also important that you have this switch on the right setting. Uh, it can it tells you there uh, that be your large ROM, which for this instance should be on the top, uh, and all your smaller ones will be down the bottom. And your pins there your 400 one is your smallest EEPROM and then all your large ones just go over that section there into that that part uh, hopefully you've written it all successfully 
Uh, if it doesn't write, you get an error message. I can just show you that now. Uh, oh no, well, the device isn't connected. But um, it will come up with a red thing there anyway. Um, the chances are the EEPROM might have information on it. Because they are old, they might have something on. So get an EEPROM eraser. They're not that much, really. Um, and give it 10 minutes in that. And that should sort it out. If it doesn't, it probably means the the problem is knackered. I have had a couple before that just don't do anything. So that's that. Um, pop it into your homebrew adapter. Again, uh, that that will show you where the um, the pin should sit, and you'll have dip switches as well. And you set them according to the table, which is in the bottom corner there. Uh, pop it in, see if it works, and then if it does, you can bang it onto the board. And the the board also has uh, jumpers, which is SP1 and 2. Uh, underneath the EEPROM that I've got on the picture, it does actually have a table, which tells you which one to solder up, depending on which EEPROM you're using. You can then uh, solder in the resistor, which is a 1K resistor. Uh, it doesn't matter about the capacitor, it still works without, but that's just preference if you want to put a capacitor in just do that that's it that is all there is to it it really is simple when you know how uh, I hope it's helped you uh, if you need to ask any questions please please put a comment um, down below and I'll do my best to answer any questions